What's up guys, welcome to Food52. My name is Dale Taldi and I am the chef and founder of Food Crush Hospitality. And today we are making a version of a dish that we serve at my restaurant Goose Feather in Terrytown, New York called Wild Mushroom Slippery Noodles with Hazelnuts. So let's get at it. This dish is really based around kind of two major ingredients, right? The noodles and the mushrooms. And then all these kind of accoutrements that help flavor these noodles. So we have some shiitake mushrooms here that are sliced and uh, we have a cup here and we need about two cups. So we're going to finely julienne these shiitakes. Uh, and any mushroom that you might have is great with this. We at the restaurant use a, uh, a mix of shiitake, maitake, oyster, trumpet, cinnamon cap, honshiminji. And if you can't find like these exotic mushrooms, which I mean, shiitakes aren't that super exotic anymore. Um, Buttons, creminis, polribellos, all those will work in this dish. So there's two really major sticking points to this dish. Um, and with any stir fry, it's that temperature of the pan, and then you have all your ingredients and your mise en place kind of laid out and uh, ready for you to go into this. Because while this might take, say, 15 minutes worth of chopping, assembling, digging in your pantry for that oyster sauce that you bought like two years ago that you don't know where you left it. You have to have everything at hand, but you also need a super hot pan. Um, and we're getting this pan really hot. I mean, like smoking point hot because we want to get really great caramelization and infuse a lot of flavor in a short amount of time. So pan's getting hot. And you know, when you're, when you're judging heat in a pan, the, the easiest way is to see a little shimmer um, in the oil that you're getting now, and then a little bit of heat or a little smoking to that. So we're gonna go into this right now. Great, you wanna hear that sizzle? You know, if I was at the restaurant on the walk, we'd be tossing it right now, but we're gonna let this really kind of build some caramelization right now. And you can immediately smell um, almost that umami coming off of these shiitake mushrooms. You know, part of the prep that we didn't d do is cut these scallions. So we're gonna cut these into about an inch piece. So once we kind of have this going, and, and if you're using an electric stove, I wouldn't pull the pan off the toss. Just move the, move the ingredients inside the pan so it, it retains that heat and keeps that heat uh, uh, on your ingredient. So I mean, even now you can see that these shiitake mushrooms have dropped about half their weight uh, or, or like their volume. It's released some water, you see some steam coming up. Um, and they're starting to slightly brown on the bottom. And you know, you wanna get a lot more of that caramelization and that browning. And then we're gonna go in with our aromatics. So, you know, we have shallots here, we have garlic, we have ginger. We will save the scallions kind of towards the end, but we really wanna get um, these ingredients into the pan to toast off when the shiitake mushrooms have got a nice browning and a nice color to them. And notice I haven't seasoned at all with anything yet, right? I don't wanna pull any more water from the mushrooms, because it's gonna prevent that nice browning. Now, we've made a little kind of pocket on the bottom here, um, so we can cook the rest of our aromatics. So, shallots go in. And I like a lot of shallots. And now we're gonna take our time a little bit too, because we've minced the garlic and the ginger. So, if we add this too soon, it's gonna brown and get kind of dark before the shallots have had time to uh, do their thing and get nice and kind of toasty. So you're seeing the browning of these shallots. And you can more importantly smell the browning of these shallots. We're gonna go in with our garlic and our ginger. You might see that this might take, start to take a little bit more oil because kind of all these ingredients are, 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 are soaking them in. So don't be afraid to you know, add a splash of oil because you know you're gonna have to add in um, the noodles and then some of these scallions to this dish. So at this point, you're really kind of obviously watching the browning happen, but you're smelling the aromatics come out. And that is a really important part of this because you can almost smell it being done, right? You know that the garlic and the ginger are doing their thing and they're cooking by just the way they smell off the pan. Next, we're gonna take Shaoxing wine and give this a nice splash of Shaoxing wine. And that will kind of stop all the browning immediately. So Shaoxing wine, it's a rice wine. It's been aged, so it kind of has this sherry-like feel to it. Um, and if you can't find Shaoxing wine, one, you're not trying hard enough. And a lot of people always, what if I can't find it? 
Try harder. <laughs> just try harder. We're gonna add some chicken stock to this just to kind of add more moisture. You definitely could add water if you want. Some soy. This is gonna add, you're gonna start to add like salt and seasoning to this, right? This is the umami. This is the sugar, you know, salt. The saltiness from the soy needs to, a little bit of a balance. And this is kind of my magic, uh, my magic sauce that cures all. It's oyster sauce. Um, it's kind of this finished sauce as it is. Um, it's really, with Shaoxing and oyster, these two ingredients help make like Chinese food taste inherently Chinese and authentic. So we're using dried rice noodles. We have pre-soaked these noodles in cold water for about 30 minutes, just until they've gotten a little bit um, soft. And uh, that's all you really need is 30 minutes because you wanna keep the bounciness and almost that slipperiness of the noodle. Since we've browned everything off, now is a time where you can actually get a little toss in if you're, you feel good about it yourself and uh, don't mind making a mess on the stove. So you'll immediately see that these noodles are really gonna start to soak up all that liquid and all that goodness, all that oyster sauce, all that soy. And me personally, I love bean sprouts when they've just like started to kind of fall and wilt a little bit. So when I'm like one to two minutes away from the dish being completely done, I start to, I fold these in. And this is like a, you know, this is a, this is a noodle dish, right? It's, um, it's not like, it's not meant to have like sauce kind of weeping everywhere. It's, you want all these, all this goodness, this liquid to get in, incorporated into the noodle. You know this is done when you pull the noodles away from the pan and there's not, not any liquid pulling at the bottom. It's been absorbed and into the noodle. You know, with a lot of Asian dishes, what you're looking for is that balance of sweet, salty, sour, umami, and bitter. Um, so at the end, I finish this with just a touch of lemon juice. You could use lime juice, you could use sherry vinegar, but I like the freshness of kind of lemon juice and toasted hazelnuts. This is definitely not traditional, um, but it's, I think, you know, cause you have mushrooms in here, I think um, mushrooms and hazelnuts are like a beautiful pairing. So I love the crunch and the texture that the, the hazelnuts bring to this. There it is. Wild mushroom slippery noodles with hazelnuts. Um, I love this dish as a quick and easy weekend meal, but also I think it's dope enough to serve for friends for a special occasion on a, on a, on a weekend or uh, you know any special occasion you might have. Let's get into it. The hazelnuts are so key to this. I think that it adds a nice riches, but more importantly, like a beautiful crunch, almost unexpected crunch to this um, noodle. Guys, thanks for watching. I had so much fun making this noodle. I hope you guys take this inspiration, make your own mushroom noodle and improvise, have fun with it and make it yours. Check me out at my restaurant, Goose Feather in Terrytown, New York, and get my cookbook, Asian American. Thanks for watching. Ben.